Okay, so I removed the back cover uh, just using a Phillips head screwdriver. Just remove all the screws. Uh, you may have to stand it up first because the screws will just sit there in the pockets, but then you pull that off. And you come down here to the right, there's your power cable. And right here, there's a fuse that I pulled out with a, a flathead screwdriver. And there's also a fuse right here. And I pulled both of them out. These are the two fuses that I pulled out. As you can see, they're ceramic fuses, 6.3 amps, 250 volts. You can't tell if they're blown by visual, but you can tell by a multimeter. This is my multimeter, and I have the red in the resistor spot and the black in the comm spot. And then I turned it to diode mode, which is this symbol right here. Now to check and make sure if these two touch, it should go pretty close to zero. And it does. So when I do it to the fuses, um, let me show you what happens. All right, so let's see what happens when I put the meter right here for this one. Good, so that go, that's a good fuse, it goes to zero. Now let's check this one right here. Uh-oh, stays at one. This fuse stays at one, which tells me that this fuse is broken. So I am going to go to an electronic store in the morning and get a 6.3 amp 250 volt ceramic fuse and put it back on the TV and see if it works. Ace Hardware, Ace Electronics. Got some new fuses at Ace Electronics. Slow blow, 6.3 amps, 250 volts, ceramic. All right, we're back. Got the new screws. These were $4 for a five pack. Did see them on Amazon. Just make sure and get the slow Slow cooking fuses. Make sure. FT63AH250V. P. T six point three AH Fuck. All right, so apparently there's two different types of fuses for the Samsung TV. There is a this one right here, right above the plug, is the 6.3 amp, 250 volt. And this one right here, next to these two capacitors, is a 3.15 amp, 250 volt. And that's the one that's not working for me. So I get to go back to Ace Hardware and get the 3.15 amp fuse. But hey, it's a $4 box of five. So if that fixed this... Christmas tree light that fixes this Christmas light problem then I'm good with that There you are. All right, I'm back. This is the 6.3 amp fuse The original one because it wasn't broken Now I'm putting the new and I tested it uh, 3.15 amp fuse There you go. All right, let's see if it works. All right, and these are all the screws I took off the TV. Turn the flash on. All right, and these are all the screws I took off the TV. Took out this guy, these six at the bottom, the three on the side, the, these two in the center, and these three on the side. After that, the TV, you should just be able to pop off. You don't need to mess with these screws down here at all. So I also had to remove this bolt right here uh, to get the back cover off. 
Okay, so still no standby light, so I'm going to investigate further. That's what we do here at Cup of Java. We get to the root cause. I pulled out the 3.15 fuse, and now they're both at showing up one on here. So it blew the fuse instantly, so that tells me that there's something else going on here. Okay, update. I got shocked. <laughs> Plugged it in with the cover off, and I sat here and watched this fuse blow up and then when I tried to get it out it shocked me and I'm not reenacting it so I'm gonna take off this power supply board and look at the bottom and start checking these capacitors to see which ones causing me all this grief and voltage taking a before video taking out these screws and then I'm gonna use a small screwdriver to take out these if I have to just take out all the big screws with the box around them. Alright guys, it's up. Let's take a look. We're doing this together. Alright. Um, does anything look out of the ordinary to you? Hmm. This right here, that little squiggly line, that's where the fuse is, and that's where it blew up. So I'm going to check the capacitors around it and ground them out, de-energize them using needle nose pliers, and start measuring some resistances or capacitance and see what's going on. Call me crazy, but I think I may have found the problem. At first I thought these capacitors were, uh, I don't know, glued on somehow, secured, but I think they exploded and then went to the closest metal thing that they could find. Or I don't I don't know, maybe not. Maybe that is supposed to look like that. To me it looks like those things exploded. Okay guys, new development. I got a MESR one hundred, which is a ESR meter, and it helps to find bad capacitors on a circuit board. So I'm using I've been, I was using this to test I pulled out the television power supply. This is what it looks like. Yeah, so you remember this guy? So I'm looking at all the capacitors, which are these black cylinders here. And I am testing the soldering points on the bottom using these two leads. So learned a little bit of circuitry, but we're going to get through this. We don't give up here at Cup Java, all right? Now, I'm, I've been looking at all the... This thing will tell you if the capacitor is good or bad if it's below a certain range. Uh, I'll, go ahead, I'll go ahead and show you a good one and then show you the one that I think is causing the problem. All right, so I'm going to look at one of these two big boys here uh, show you so I have my meter these leads are a little small on this and I'm putting it one end on one end the other on the other and this is under directly under those big boys one of the big boys and it'll show the reading and uh, this is reading the resistance. And as long as it says, if it's as long as it's below 200 microfarads, then it's a good capacitor. And it is. And see how the resistance is like 0.2. Now, if I go to the, res the capacitor that I think is bad, look at the readings. Hang on. Now it's giving me good readings. Let me zero this out. There's a zero function on here. 
that if I use a screwdriver, clip these on and then press zero between, between readings to calibrate it, now the one I think is causing the problem is this guy that's attached to the bar right here. Now that's supposed to look like that. That's glue, adhesive, but it's it's been giving me some weird readings. Like the resistance just keeps going up. So let's see if that is the case. So I look under here to find the one right here. CM808. Let's put these on. Let's look at the resistance. 1.7.9. Now it's giving me good readings. I thought I found it. Originally it was going through the roof. 0.7. Good if capacitor is less than 200 microfarads. Well, at least I'm showing you how how to do it. Thought I found it. I guess I'll keep looking. This one looks good. Important safety tip. It's important to zero out or to drain the capacitors. And to do this, you need needle nose pliers. You pretty much just put Put that across both points, drain each capacitor. I just got shocked, that's why. <laughs> so you have to put that across to drain the capacitors because those things store electricity, that's what they do. And then to make sure that they're zeroed out and ready for measurement. All right, that same resistor is acting up again. I need the video evidence to prove it. I can set this phone up. That would be perfect. All right, so I zeroed this out. Zeroed out, guys. That is the capacitor that is glued to this. Zeroed it out using the ESR meter. Legs. I'm just gonna make this camera angle work. It's right here. Put the leads on here. You see that? Twenty five, twenty six, one point two eight, point eight two one, seventy two. It's all over the place. Twenty nine. All right, I'm taking that capacitor out. Hopefully, that captured that. Now, let's take get a soldering iron, take up this capacitor, and compare. All right, let's see if I know how to use a soldering iron. Oh my gosh, it's smoking. Can you wipe it on a wet sponge? All right, got it out. It took forever, but geez. All right, let's see how oh. the capacitor looks now. Um. Get it with the readings. See how old Cap's doing here. Got bent a little bit on taking it out, but okay, okay. Uh, I need the little lead, other leads. Hang on. God. All right, here we go. Let's see. This is the capacitor. It is a Lux little. Capacitor. Please forgive my wife. Um, Lux capacitor. Can we... 
let's see. Negative to negative. This is showing 23. Are these ones the water ones? Yeah, I might just. 23 microfarads. This capacitor is a. Twenty two microfarads. So this capacitor is good. So I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm gonna go buy a new TV. Correction, I know what I'm doing, apparently, but since it's the living room TV and we gotta have a TV, I'm out of time. That's how you check capacitors. And that's how you check a circuit board. Hello. This camera cost me five hundred dollars. Zap. Surprise! Red Wave Extreme! <laughs> Zap! Z Zap! Zap. I'm having a good time by myself, by myself. Do you want to have a good time with me? Hi. How are you? Can I buy you a drink? Should I have one? Yeah, the same, the same, Morty. Yeah, the same. What I always get, yeah. So, what's your name? Ah, I like that. What country is that from? Oh, interesting, yeah. Ah, here you go. Man, you look great. Where's the bathroom?